On today's show, LSU quarterback Miles Brennan, who is returning for a sixth season of eligibility after entering the transfer portal, decided to stay in Baton Rouge. We're going to catch up with him, talk about his decision, and much more. Also, we will go around the conference as Aggie tight end Jalen Watermeyer heads to the NFL. Qu Kentucky quarterback Will Levis is coming back, and several other opt-outs and transfers as well. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. Great to have you guys along. Today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Sonos is the official sponsor of ESPN College Football. Go to Sonos.com to learn more. I'm Chris Gordy. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Remember, Locked on SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Let's jump into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handle. Throws into the ball. What a catch. Around the conference. And we start over at Texas A&M. It's tight end Jalen Watermeyer has announced his plans that uh, he is officially going to be heading to the NFL. The tight end wrote on social media, he loves Aggie fans, and added, thank you so much for these last three years. They've been amazing. He says, I'm grateful and truly honored to be a part of the Aggie family. Number 85, signing out. Watermeyer was the Aggies' leading receiver in the regular season with 40 catches for 500 yards and four touchdowns. He thanked God and the Texas A&M coaching staff, his teammates, and Aggie Nation as he starts to prepare for the next level. Meanwhile, over Kentucky, some good news for them as quarterback Will Levis, who was a key part of their turnaround this year offensively, played to a 9-3 record. They will be playing Iowa in the Citrus Bowl. And Levis, of course, is a draft eligible, transferred in from Penn State, faced the life-altering decision of whether to declare for the draft or come back for another season in Lexington on Monday night. He said he is coming back. He was considered to be among the top 10 quarterbacks in this year's draft. All eyes will be on him as he looks to improve his stock and help Kentucky uh, continue its run of success. During the regular season, Levis threw for over 2,500 yards, 23 touchdowns, 12 picks, while adding almost 400 rushing yards and nine touchdowns rushing. He will have two years of eligibility remaining. We have Liam Cohen, offense coordinator, and the Kentucky offense. They will have to adjust for the Citrus Bowl as uh, – Liam Cohen telling the media yesterday they will be without two of their receivers in Josh Ali and Isaiah Epps. Both players were reportedly involved in a car accident recently. They are both fine, but they cannot play in the bowl game, Cohen said. Ali was Kentucky's second-leading receiver in the regular season. Epps appeared in 11 games, had 11 catches for 171 yards and a touchdown. Over in Florida, defensive back Kair Elam very well could have opted out of Florida's bowl game, especially with Dan Mullen gone and all the big changes, but the junior cornerback says he will indeed play in the Gasparilla Bowl against UCF. Interim head coach Greg Knox revealed that news on Monday, meeting with the media. Elam does have two years of eligibility remaining, but uh, has not officially said whether or not he's going to come back next year. The deadline to declare for the NFL draft is January 17th. A lot of people have Elam projected high on their draft boards, so you would assume he's probably going to be heading uh, pro, but we'll wait for an official announcement on that. But a little surprising, he will play in the bowl game for the Florida Gators. Over at Arkansas, their offensive line taking a little bit of a dip. Jalen St. John, a guard from St. Louis, has entered the transfer portal according, according to hogbeat.com. St. John was a three-star in the class of 2020. Did not show up in the uh, to the Razorbacks bowl practice on Monday. According to hogbeat.com, Arkansas is preparing for the Outback Bowl against Penn State. Sam Pittman talking to the media said, I really can't elaborate on St. John because I don't really know any more on that. He just didn't show up for practice, so I got to talk to him. He redshirted as a true freshman in 2020. This year he played in a pair of games but didn't see any substantial action. Meanwhile, Sam Pittman and Arkansas continue to prepare for the Outback Bowl. They held a scrimmage on Friday as part of their preparations. Unfortunately, the scrimmage ended with an injury to backup quarterback Cade Renfro. He injured his uh, uh, ACL while he was trying to cut on a non-contact play. He didn't attempt to pass for the Hogs during the regular season. KJ Jefferson and Malik Hornsby were the two to do that, but uh, he will miss some time with that torn ACL. 
over at LSU, Neil Farrell, who's a big-time veteran on that defensive line, has announced he will opt out of the Texas Bowl and prepare for the NFL draft. He posted to social media, I appreciate all the love and support. Will not be playing in the bowl game. I've decided it's best. I start my pre-draft process. Much love to LSU and the relationships I have built. Farrell arrived at LSU in the 2017 recruiting class. Stayed for an extra year because of the pandemic. Played in all 12 games this year. Made 45 tackles, nine uh, and a half tackles for a loss or two sacks. Ole Miss, they're preparing for their Sugar Bowl a game against Baylor. Should be a really good one. On Monday, the defense got some bad news as it was reported. Defensive back uh, Ja'Cory Hawkins is entering the transfer portal. Hawkins played in eight games last year, making six starts, recorded 28 tackles. Uh, where he will end up playing next year, we will see, but he is heading out of Oxford. There will be one big-time person in attendance for that Sugar Bowl game when Ole Miss takes on Baylor. Arch Manning is uh, going to plan on being in attendance. Ole Miss will get an opportunity to showcase the Rebel program for him. Manning already had uh, visits this year to Georgia, Alabama, Texas, Ole Miss, and Clemson. In recent weeks when visitor, visitors uh, or recruiters could start visiting prospects, he got visits from Ole Miss, LSU, Texas, and Tulane. Manning, who plays for Isidore Newman, is the number one player in the class of 2023. And, of course, you know, his uncle's played in the SEC, so why wouldn't he consider Ole Miss? Uh, Lincoln Riley putting together his staff over at USC, and he is reportedly going to nab another SEC assistant. As according to Yahoo's Pete Thamel, Riley is set to hire offensive line coach Josh Henson away from Texas A&M. Henson used to coach under Riley's Oklahoma squads as a member of the Oklahoma State staff. He joined the Aggies in 2019. He's a key member of their really good offensive line last year. So it'll be a big loss for the Aggies. Over at Georgia, Kirby Smart facing some questions about JT Daniels' practice activity for much of the season. But as Georgia prepares to face Michigan in the playoff, he's not giving up any detailed updates. Smart told reporters yesterday that he will not disclose any information on if JT Daniels is taking reps with the starters at practice. He added that JT, along with Stetson Bennett, Carson Beck, and Brock Vandergriff, have all practiced well. Last week, he told the media that Bennett and Daniels are evaluated each day. And while Bennett has made some boneheaded plays, quote, uh, against Alabama in the SEC title game, he made some good plays as well. Daniels has dealt with lat and oblique injuries this season, has been healthy enough to play for several weeks, but Bennett, the fifth-year senior, took control of the starting job and never looked back. In addition, Kirby said Chris Smith and Jamari Salyer have been practicing. Oh, Smith is somewhat limited, overcoming a knee injury. He also added that Lad McConkey has been banged up, missed some time, but he is expected back. Smith previously battled a shoulder injury since the Auburn game. George Pickens, who made his first catch of the season against Georgia Tech, he's still working to get back to where he was before his ACL injury, and he's not fully there yet, Kirby said. One other Georgian note, according to UGASports.com, quarterback signee Gunnar Stockton, this quarterback that signed his national letter of intent with the program on the first day of the early signing period, he will be on campus as the Dogs begin practicing for their game against Michigan. Stockton was ranked as the number seven quarterback in the class of 2022. He's an early enrollee, and uh, Georgia fans will get a glimpse of him in the annual G-Day game coming up this spring. Meanwhile, Alabama, they're missing their key contributor in John Mechie as they head into the playoffs. Mechie is a significant loss, but, of course, the Alabama roster stacked with wide receivers. On Monday, Saban talking to reporters said he has seen numerous wide receivers step up in the absence of Mechie. He mentioned Javon Baker, Treshawn Holden, Ja'Cory Brooks. Also said Ajay Hill is making some good plays. Or Ajay Hall, rather. He said uh, he's a top 50 class of 2021 recruit. That he vented frustration this season on social media, hinting at maybe transferring. But uh, Saban's been talking them up and said the freshman wide receiver has impressed. Marcus Satterfield and Spencer Rattler, uh, obviously they've taken their fair, fair uh, share of criticism this year. But uh, the South Carolina offensive coordinator said his first message to his new quarterback, Rattler, said, I told him everybody in the country thinks you stink. Everybody in the country thinks I stink. Let's get this. Uh, at this with the biggest possible chip on our shoulder. So that will be interesting. Lastly, Kentucky basketball on Monday. They saw their rivalry game coming up Wednesday against Louisville put on hold. It's COVID issues are affecting the Cardinals. According to reports, the Wildcats reached out to multiple different suitors. They will play Western Kentucky now in place of 
uh, Louisville. And there you have it. Thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Make sure to check out the Ultimate College Football Playoff Preview 2021, local experts, betting advice, and draft analysis. The most comprehensive college football playoff preview is out this Friday. When we return, we will catch up with our buddy Miles Brennan, LSU quarterback. That conversation is next. Look, guys, this is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours, but on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is that how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software. If you want to see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth with visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR planning, budgeting, and more. NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. Over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite. And for the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program for those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked on or slash locked, L-O-C-K-E. So head to netsuite, N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com slash locked, L-O-C-K-E-D for the special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Again, that's netsuite.com slash locked. Go check them out today. Roll along here, Locked On SEC. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every day. We'll be catching up with a little guy, a lot of guys from around the SEC Finishing off this season, getting ready for next season, looking ahead. We talked with uh, Ken Seals, Vanderbilt quarterback. We talked with Valus Jones from Tennessee, who's getting ready to take his game to the next level, preparing for the Senior Bowl. And a guy who we thought might be making a transition to a different place just recently announced he's coming back. And that is Miles Brennan, LSU quarterback, heading into, I think, your sixth year now as far as eligibility. Miles, welcome in, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank y'all for having me. And yes, it it uh it is going to be my sixth year of eligibility. So, uh, yeah, I know it is funny. I will be the grandpa of the team. <laughs> yeah. So, so take us through the 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 decision, Miles, because you know, look, obviously, um, you know, you get hurt, right? But well, take us back to the start of last season, right? Because we all thought this was going to be your team, your year, and all that. Max did a good job finishing off the year prior and all that, but. Take us through, I know we heard about the infamous p- fishing trip. I mean, was it really just something that was just, it was an unfortunate, just kind of klutzy accident? Yeah, it was uh, It was a few days before camp. Um, I was going fishing with some of my buddies, kind of our last little thing that we were going to do together, you know, before camp and the season got started. And we were just, uh, we were getting the boat ready and, and rigging rigging the baits and going to go on a little offshore trip. And I ran, I was running down the back stairs and slipped with my flip flops on and you know, just caught the last stare um, and unfortunately broke my arm. Um, and that's that's kind of how how the, how this past year started uh, in terms of fall camp and uh, had surgery, you know, the, the next couple of days and then started the rehab process and, and trying to get back. Um, you know, I, I had the plate and the screws in there. And so it was just, a, you know, a really winding road um, with with my vision before that injury had happened um and then ha- having to take a step back and and just kind of redraw it up and uh kind of come up with a game plan on, on how we're going to move forward but you know everything happens for a reason and i know that's crazy to say that for an injury like i don't know what the reason is behind me you know i don't know why that has happened um but today i'm very fortunate to be a- to have another year and have another opportunity um to still achieve my my dreams ahead of me well, one last thing on that moment where you're you're sitting on the ground. I mean, you obviously could feel something different in your arm. I mean, were you just thinking in your head, are you are you kidding me? Like you had the injury two years ago, then ended your season at Mizzou and all that. I mean, like, are you thinking in your mind, no, this this cannot be happening? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, and it was very uh, demoralizing. You know, obviously sitting there and, and having to call my parents and and talk to them. You know, about what had just happened. Um, and then I just uh, after I got through that you know tough emotional time I was just like look this is uh, this is how it is you know I, I can't go back and change anything right now um, so just you know work my butt off every day and, and make sure that I get back you know to where I, where I need to be and to where I want to be. 
So fast forward to this season, obviously, you know, you know, we knew you were out and somewhere around the middle of the season towards the back stretch, we hear you had entered the transfer portal and we kind of get it right. Max Johnson is kind of, he had kind of established himself and obviously Garrett Nussmeyer come in, LSU's got a new quarterback coming in, Walker Howard and, and this whole thing. Take us through the decision from entering the portal, just the conversations. I know you talked with a couple different schools. What ultimately led, you know, the conversation with Brian Kelly that led you to decide, you know what? staying at LSU, coming back to LSU is the right decision. Yeah, so obviously with the circumstances that presented themselves that forced, you know, they didn't force me, but that had made me make my decision to enter the transfer portal. Um, and, you know, it's probably three weeks that I was in the portal and, and getting, you know, phone calls and, and getting interest from a bunch of different schools. And I was trying to just figure out you know, where would be the best fit. And the biggest thing that I was looking for is, is, is having an opportunity with one year left to be able to go out in the field, you know, play a full season, be the guy, help my team win as many games as possible, but ultimately, you know, showcase my talent, my abilities to be able to play at the next level because that's obviously my main goal and that's where I want to. That's what I want to do. Um, and so, you know, every day that went by, you would see that more quarterbacks are entering the portal, and it started to get, you know, it, it was starting to heat up a little bit more. And obviously, schools, uh, if they are looking for a transfer quarterback, they're only they're looking for one, you know, um, and so I was, I, you know, prior to last week, I was wanting to make my decision before Christmas, uh, just to you know be able to get that weight off my shoulders and, and be able to enjoy some time with family and things like that. And I sat down with a few schools, um, and in the back of my head, it was, you know, well, what what would be the the only school that would make us reconsider our decision, you know, my decision on where I would go? And it was, it was it was LSU, and it was Brian Kelly, and out of the blue. Um, again, you know, this is all, I, I, it's all meant to be because out of the blue, a day before I was wanting to make my decision, he called me and went up to his office and him and I talked, um, and you know, he laid it out there for me, you know, he laid out what his plan was and what his vision was and what he wa- is wanting to do on offense and what he sees in me, um, and wanted to offer me the opportunity before he, you know, went out and, and got another transfer. Um, and so I really did appreciate that. And I told him, look, you, you got to give me at least a day, you know, I, uh, I completely respectably had shut the door on LSU just in terms of, you know, I, I was moving on and now it kind of came full circle. And, uh, when I got that call and when I talked to coach Kelly a few times and we sat down and talked X's and O's and things like that, I just really felt that this was, this is a great situation for me and a great opportunity. Um, and as hard as it was to leave, I knew that LSU was where I want to be. And I mean, how crazy that I will be able to finish out my career where I started with the journey that I've had. I just know that it's going to be one heck of a story when it's over with. All right, bowl season is here, and that means if you're an SEC fan, you need to be checking out the Prize Picks app. We've been telling you about it for a while now. If you still haven't signed up, what are you waiting for? In addition to college football action, they've, they're making college basketball more exciting. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. They're a leader. In the college sports daily fantasy world, they offer more props, uh, any prop you can think of. In basketball, you can play points, rebounds, assists, three-pointers made, and much more. And all of our users that go sign up for the first time, when you use our promo code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, you'll receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. They uh, have an award-winning app you can find on the App Store, Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Price picks is safe. They offer fast withdrawals. Just go check them out. I guarantee you, you'll be intrigued. You'll look at it and say, all right, I got to sign up and get in on this before the next action of games, whether it's bowl games or college basketball, whatever. Don't hesitate. Go check them out right now. You go to their website, prizepicks.com. Make sure you use our promo code locked on when you sign up, L O C K E D O N, or go to the app store, download the app today. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. Continue our conversation with uh, Miles Brennan, LSU quarterback, still LSU quarterback. He will be back in Baton Rouge. Uh, how excited! Obviously, LSU. You just had the just had their signing day. 
uh, signed a couple of stud offensive linemen in this class, get a big transfer coming over from FIU. Um, I mean, how much do you pay attention to that going, okay, so it looks like we'll get some upgrades on the offensive line. You know the receiving core is is really, really good with Jack Besh back, Malik Neighbors, all these pieces. And, sure. you know, we'll see what Kayshawn Boutte, obviously, a lot of people expecting him back. But, uh, you know, I guess all that kind of factors in your decision as well, kind of saying, hey, look, we can be even better on offense next year uh, with all these guys back. Definitely. Yeah, that was a – Obviously, that was another part of, of my decision, you know, is, is making sure that I have um, – that there are surrounding weapons, you know, surrounding the quarterback position. Um, and Coach Kelly has done a tremendous do- job in the little time that he's been here at LSU to make sure that he's going out and getting the right guys um, to make sure that we are successful, offense, defense, and special teams. And you can kind of see it every day. You saw it on signing day. You know, we signed 13 of 13 that, you know, we were supposed to sign. Uh, and then, you know, the day after we go and get, you know, Miles Frazier, um, which is a huge addition to the offensive line, uh, receiving core, like you talked about, running backs. I mean, I feel very confident with the guys that we have and then the guys that we'll sign in February um, to make us even more of an elite offense and to really just take this offense to another level um, and go out there and perform and execute. And, and ultimately, the result will take care of itself. So what do you do in the classroom now? I'm sure you've already you got your degree, right? Like, what are you? You just take like ballroom dancing now? Like, what do you do classwork wise? I, 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 I wish it was that easy. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm I'm working on my master's. Uh, you know, so you have to take classes obviously to be eligible and things like that. So if I'm going to be in classes, I might as well put it to put it to use. So I'm I'm doing my master's. I'm you know, and uh, hopefully you know if if it works out that I end up graduating with my master's before I leave, great. And if not, you know, then I already have my undergrad, so I'll, uh, I'm set on, in the uh, in the academic in the academic world. That's very cool, and and I know another cool part is you know look you you've been in school this long. The NIL deal came to fruition. I know you signed right. a couple of big deals last year. I have to think, Miles, some companies are probably going to be wanting to jump and attach themselves to you for next year with you sticking around Baton Rouge another year, right? Definitely, yeah. You know it's uh it's an exciting time. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's obviously very exciting for the younger guys who are going to be able to uh, take advantage of it for you know, a long, longer period of time. And yeah, It's, it's going to be interesting to see how it changes college football, but it, it's an exciting time to be able to, you know, to earn some earnings off of, off of your name and, and things like that. So it's exciting. I, uh, I, you know, I, I keep my head on straight, and I don't let those things you know, distract me from, from what my mission is. And that's just kind of a little extra fun to have you know, when you have time to do it. But ultimately – um, you know, if, if I do what I need to do, uh, you know, the, the next chapter of my life will, will take care of me. Uh, just a couple more for you, Miles. Looking at this, uh, you know, obviously looking ahead at this season, you're a guy who I believe you were recruited initially by Les Miles. You played for Coach O. Now Brian Kelly coming in. Initial impressions of Coach Kelly. How different is he? Obviously, he's a winner everywhere he's been. He proved that at Notre Dame. But initial impressions of Brian Kelly and what makes you so excited to play for him? He uh, he's a he's a very sharp coach. Uh, yeah, him and I sat down and, and we talked um, not just football, you know, but life and getting to know each other and what what our what our goals are and what our dreams are and and you know what our so we just had very very intelligent you know deep conversations. Um, and he's just a very sharp sharp guy, you know. And, and he has uh, he has the you know the enjoyable side to him, the fun relaxed side, you know. But when it's time when it's time for ball, it's you know it's, it's strictly for ball, and uh, he just wants to make sure that. Everyone's doing their own job. Uh, you know, if you're doing your own job, then we'll be just fine. Just do your job. Take care of what you need to take care of. Show up when you need to show up. Do the right thing. Lead by example. Uh, and, and we'll be a winning football team. And um, I just I – re- I really like his intensity and, and his attention to detail and, and how serious he is. Um, I mean, he, he came in day one and obviously had the press conference. And then, like, two days later, he was out on the road recruiting. Um, and so I just uh, – he is very serious, and I think his resume speaks for itself. All right, last thing. How uh, how busy was the phone when you made the announcement? I mean, well, I'm sure text messages and, like, it was so funny. You, like, you go from one minute, maybe a little bit of an enemy of the, you know, LSU fans, like, good, right. get out of here, to, oh, my God, our hero is back. He's coming back to save right. the day. Like, how, how much did the phone blow up with tech, text messages and DMs and all that? It was uh, it was overwhelmingly. Uh, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was very overwhelming. Um you know, but it, it was all positive stuff, and I, I couldn't be more grateful for the support from our fans and my family and my friends and all the people who have who have been in my corner since day one because there's been a lot of ups and a lot of downs, but 
uh, you know, a lot of people have stuck with me through the thick and the thin, uh, and I'm very appreciative of all those people who, who support me and have my back, and, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to making all of them proud. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun, Miles. Uh, again, for LSU fans out there, they got to be super excited that that you're coming back and and obviously answer a big question mark at the quarterback spot and a great redemption story. I mean, you, you know, I can't wait to read the Miles Brennan book one day to hear about your journey and the story, and uh, hopefully it ends, you know, possibly with a championship at LSU. It'd be a fantastic story, and uh, appreciate you taking the time, man, and uh, best of luck this coming season. Awesome. Well, I, I appreciate y'all having me on, and I look forward to uh, talking to y'all soon. All right, there we have it. That's uh, Miles Brennan, LSU quarterback, staying at LSU, coming back for his sixth year here on Locked on SEC. All right, that is just about going to do it for this edition of Locked on SEC. My thanks to Miles Brennan for joining us. Great conversation with him. And I appreciate you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen. Check out the Locked on Bets podcast, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Hosted by your boy Q and expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms, Locked on Bets. I'm Chris Gordy. Thank you guys so much for listening. Check out our podcast throughout the week. We will be joined by Vanderbilt quarterback Ken Seals. Coming up later this week, you don't want to miss that. We'll also be talking some SEC hoops, getting you ready for Christmas. I am Chris Gordy. Thank you guys for listening. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow right here on Locked on SEC.